Hey guys, it's Shane, here to give you another Digimon 2020 Digimon Adventure episode review and recap. Today's episode was episode 18, Countdown to Tokyo's Annihilation. Whew, and uh, I got some notes here, I'm going to try to go through it, because this was a doozy of an episode. So, there was no encyclopedia at the beginning of this episode. That's kind of crazy, because they, they moved it towards the end, but that was pretty cool because it let me know wow this is actually a really important episode so we do get a bit of a recap uh the recap the recap showed us Eismon, the battle against Eismon, Eismon digivolving into a rochimon and then we get the countdown now the countdown shown everywhere it's on phones tablets the giant screens in tokyo obviously the children see it on the uh, tablet that koshiro has <coughs> excuse me and in the uh the real world, the human world, people are wondering what the heck's going on. And then, in the distance, you know, they see Rochimon's head. And before that, it was, pr pr it was before, that was after a large, like, electrical surge was going on in the area. And the electrical surge was even felt in the real world. And after the head appeared, all of a sudden, this wormhole, this wormhole that was connecting the uh, digital fake Tokyo to the real world was feeding energy into that lone Orochi, uh, Orochimon head and the the digital language of the digital world appeared around it and digivolved into a brand new Digimon known as Nidhogmon and I got a nice little picture of Nid Nidhogmon right here just like someone had actually pointed out in the last video that's what he turned into I had no clue I don't even know where the person found out this information, but they actually have a little blurb up on Wikimon. And Nidhogmon is a colossal Digimon that takes a vast amount of energy into his body, constantly overheating, and you saw those little wings. Well, depending on what color of the wings, that lets you know at what what uh, danger level it's at. And the redder they get, the most dangerous it's at. Nidhogmon repeatedly destroys and absorbs things, leaving nothing in its wake. Which is exactly what they were told because Nidhogmon, this is the first time this actually happened, spoke through Koshiro's uh, little laptop. This is the first time we had an enemy Digimon actually speak outside of Ogremon. And <clears throat> this, oh, and Andromon. And this thing says, I am Nid Nidhogmon. I have surpassed Ultimate. I am Omega. So they're like, man. And of course, in, J in Japanese, Ultimate is actually perfect, perfect form, and the mega form is actually called Ultimate. But again, I'm sticking to the uh, English localization of the forms. So they all figure out this guy is huge, and only Taichi and Agumon and Yamato and Gabumon are trying to, you know, get themselves up because everybody else is wiped out, <laughs> wiped out, tired, and so they slowly start making their way forward. Because this, as you saw the picture, a little tail, a little tail. This thing is massive and. The tail was actually long enough that it encircled that large fake Tokyo, keeping basically all of them inside. This thing has eyes on its tongue, eyes on along those scales. I actually thought what was its wings was actually mouths, because that's how massive and awkward looking it is. And uh, excuse me, as uh, as they're going through this, a feather starts to appear in the real world in front of Takaru. And uh, Hikari, the siblings of Yamato and Taichi. And it's, you know, Coach Rose getting, is actively telling them it's drawn in energy from Tokyo. And everything that's happening in the Fate Tokyo is happening in the real world still. It is linked to them. And just like the uh, blurb said, it's going to explode with energy. And once it explodes with energy, it's going to wipe out all of Tokyo. That's not going to be... That, that's, that's a definite fact, given that it had broken glass from the fake Tokyo into the real Tokyo. Saying, I guess what the eyes my line is all about eye beams because this thing's firing crazy eye beams and it's just breaking glass. Uh, reminded me a lot of Shin Godzilla. This is very Shin Godzilla-esque, which is not a knock. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, so we get a uh, purple light that's gathering from the phone. 
people's phones in the real world are getting hot. They're dropping them. They are like, their people are just starting to run away <clears throat> after that that large electrical storm. And it's just uh, uh, Hikari. Yeah, Hikari, she's still there kind of watching all this because she can still see this. See what's going on in the digital world with her brother. And at this point, there's only like two minutes left. And, you know, Tai and Yamato, they have this Naruto Sasuke moment where they say each other's names. They're Digimon, Digibobs, they're champion forms. <clears throat> and they're running up this Nidhoggmon, this giant thing. They're running up, firing their blast point blank. But, of course, it does nothing. And it op Nidhoggmon opens this giant maw. It just engulfs them in this light beam attack. Something that you would think they would just instantly disintegrate. But the feathers for the siblings appear once more. Both of both uh, Takeru and Hikari, they reach for them. And in front of uh, Yamato and Garurumon and Taichi and Greymon, they see a single feather. They are engulfed in some kind of blue light. And emerging from the light is once again Omegamon. Or as we know in English, Omnimon. Which if you haven't seen him before, it is this big guy here. Now, te technically, that is the fusion of Wargreymon and Metal Garurumon. But, of course, we had a miracle happen with their two siblings reaching out and sending them their wishes because the hope of light and the hope and the crest, sorry, the crest of light and the crest of hope, <clears throat> which is Hikari's and uh, Takaru's crest, merge. And that's how <clears throat> we get here. It's truly a miracle. And let's flip this over. I got to the Omega Mon part. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen Mega Form since episode, the end of episode two, beginning of episode three. This was the first time we got Omega Mon. And actually, Koshiro remembers seeing Omega Mon be the one to uh, destroy the missiles, stop the missiles from hitting Tokyo. So, at this point, now they have one minute. And it is. I'm wondering how they're going to pull this thing off. But we get a nice little flash and back into the real world. There are now there's some there are about six kids around uh, Hikari. They don't look like any of the kids from season two of the original Digimon uh, series or the Digimon Adventure series. So I don't know who they could be. Maybe it's just kind of showing you what could be. I don't know. But <clears throat> we go back to we go back to Nidhogmon just melting he's melting these digital buildings now thank goodness it's not happening in the real world but he's melting these buildings with how hot he is and he starts just blasting that same mouth wave that he hit them with before at Omega Mon with you know Tai Chi on this side which is my left and Yamato on the right Omega Mon is just flipping its cape and this cape is making a barrier shield and it's just the beam is curving around it just amazing and then when when the uh nidhogg mons that attack doesn't work it starts using eye beams omega mon gets the gray sword from the left side and just starts swiping and breaking these beams of light he busts out the guru cannon freezes him but that doesn't really do anything but hold him because nidhogg's energy is increasing and it starts increasing so much you know the tendrils around the whole entire city is moving breaking the ground around them and it just lets off this all-encompassing explosion wave. At this point, Omega Mon is, of course, the Omega. His, his uh, shield is going up, sp splitting this all-omnidirectional attack almost. They charge forward and literally cleave this thing in two with this gray sword. Just all the way down. It's breaking the attack and breaking them. And at that point, the, the, the timer stops at six seconds. Which is just all the powers cutting back on in Tokyo. It's fantastic. Now, what was actually pretty funny is that while everybody's celebrating, uh, both Yamato and Taichi nod to each other and Omega Mon just goes straight down and stabs in the center of this fake Tokyo and just destroys it. And at this point... We see that they're in the desert, which is just wow. That that being in a desert instead of its own separate space was actually pretty interesting. 
even though it was a desert, there was like some odd shapes around, but it's a digital world. But then at that point, the timer starts up again, hit zero, and then we see a new dark eye Digimon. It seems like all these Digimon that involve like mostly single eyes or just giant eyes, crazy evil things. This thing's beating like a heart, opens up a rift in the sky, and just sucks in Koshiro, Tentamon, Joe, Goemon, Sora, Piyomon, and of course Mimi and Palmon. And it would have almost sucked up Taichi and Yamato if uh, Omegamon hadn't used his cape to wrap around them, keep them, you know, keep them uh, sturdy and centered. And throughout the, you know, the nice little beating <laughs> that we get with the single eye Digimon, we see Devimon. And we, after a quick commercial break, because you guys know how Hulu is, we get back. Agumon and Gabumon are now here. While Yamato and Taishi trying to figure out what the heck happened, Yamato says he felt like he felt a presence. And then from a giant dust storm, we get this ominous voice that's saying the human world was their feeding ground. You know, they're going to, in the, the humans waste things and buildings turn to ash and, you know, blah, 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 blah. From this giant sandy tornado, we see the visage of Devimon. And. David Mon saying light was made to be swallowed by darkness. Any resistance is death. And of course, your motto and Tai Chi are not, they're not having it. They're like, yo, where's our friends? What are you doing? Who are you? Are you the one that caused all this trouble in Tokyo? And this sandstorm thing sends them flying back. And of course, Gabumon and Agumon are going to attack it. Their attacks go right through. It dissipates. And now, your motto saying, at this point, something else is going to happen in Tokyo. But, like Tai Chi said, they have to go find their friends first. Because now, they they know who's holding the Holy Digimon. Because they try to ask, and of course, David Mon doesn't answer them whatsoever. And this is where we are left. Except we get a nice little uh, panning into this dark area. This large, dark tower that's very... Um, if you don't know much about the Digimon lore, the the, the, the great sins, sinful Digimon demons, they have their own towers that look very similar to that. Almost look like a Castlevania type tower with these dark crystals all around. And we see Devimon right in the middle of that dark castle. <sighs> this, this, this is getting real good, guys. But I told you that there was no uh, encyclopedia in the beginning because, of course, they moved it to the end. Today's was Togemon. And uh, of course, you was making note that Togemon's eyes and mouth look like a, a Haniwa. And the, uh, actually, might as well look that up right now. I'm going to look this up, look this up live. Haniwa is basically a, uh, well, it's a clay figure that was used for ritual purposes of the dead. Ooh. And give you a nice little example of what these things look like. He's wondering how much sand gets collected in it. He says he wants to have a look around. So maybe next time he will. I feel like that's not a smart thing to do. Next week's it's like he's going to be Ikakuban. I'm wondering if they're going to start moving those towards the end now. And so that way, you know, we can get straight to the episodes. But they did give us a next time. And it looks like next time we're going to get another new Digimon. A large Digimon called Valvemon. I've seen Valvemon a couple months ago. I think he might have been fan created from kids in Japan. Uh, they're going to root around inside of him with some help from Leomon, it looks like. And then I saw Minotaurmon and what looks like Bullmon. This is getting crazy. I got a feeling that we're going to get straight on the path to uh, Devimon. So I got a, got a few moments. Uh, I guess I'll give you a little bit of fun facts. Uh, fun fact. <coughs> Nidhogg. If you know anything about Norse mythology, the Nidhogg Serpent is actually underneath the world tree that holds the Nine Realms. <clears throat> and what it does is he eats at the roots, which will plunge all of existence into the cosmos and into nothing. So, meanwhile, the Nidhogg Serpent isn't the only thing that resides within the roots of Yadrasil, the world tree in Norse mythology. People who play, uh, what's that game, League of Legends... Probably know about the squirrel. Was that Smite? Lee and Smite. 
have the little squirrel that actually is in there too. So Nidhogg is basically also a term that they use for anything that was villainous or cowardly. Nidhoggmon pretty much fits the bill with trying to constantly destroy everything. Um, so what do I give the rating for this episode? <sighs> While I did enjoy it and it really pushed the uh pushed the story forward, <sighs> I gotta give it a four. Because the animation for Omnimon slash Omegamon in this episode was not as good as in episode three. Episode three was movie tier, and this was, you know, just anime tier. It, it, you can kind of tell they might have had to switch production companies, or maybe someone else drew this. But, you know, the episode was great. Seeing the heightened danger, seeing the stakes being high, that pushed it up to a four. You know, music was always great. And the reveal of this large, massive, evil Digimon was also great. Um, unlike other people online, I take no gripes with them having Mega Forms already. I mean, they got to Mega Forms in Episode 3 with Argomon and with Omegamon. Uh, the one thing that, the one question I have now, how is Devimon, a champion level Digimon, able to orchestrate all these things? <clears throat> Did he know that Aizmon would turn into this giant thing if he kept feeding from the real world? Will Devimon eventually become my oldest Mon? Because that would make sense to me because that's in their digi Digivolution path. You can check out wiki wikimon.net for that. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering are the are they gonna meet up and then everybody is everybody else gonna get like a merged mega form? Are people going to start getting their original Mega Forms? For some reason, I feel as though they might not go that path just yet. They might get to Mega Forms at least around episode 25. I'm only guessing because we see the silhouette of War Greymon in the opener. So, it's coming. I'm surprised it hasn't come here yet. But, with them all fighting together and with Yamato and Taichi being there, they needed that miracle to save the city. Which is basically the plot of the first Digimon movie. Well, technically it is the second Digimon movie. With them uh, having to fight Diaboromon. So, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with the pace they're going. Because at least it fits into the story. I'm just wondering how strong is Devimon now. Is Devimon one of those champion level Digimon that can take on ultimate levels just like Aizmon? Because that would be scary. And now we know that Leomon is coming. We're gonna we should do a little countdown into how many episodes Leomon stays alive. Cause thing is, if I know anything about Digimon, Leomon usually dies sooner or later. But who knows? Maybe he might live this one. But guys, tell me what you think. Tell me what you thought of the episode. <clears throat> Are you excited? Are you kind of upset because they're all split up and now we gotta have everybody join up again before they rescue the holy Digimon? Are you excited about what's going on with Mega Digimon showing up and being just being this being absolute power forces that are going to destroy everything unless they have a miracle happen? I'm actually looking forward to the time when they each can digivolve on their own because that means the stakes are really going to get big then. So, again, let me know what you think down below. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to get notified of more videos like this. We do these Digimon review and recaps every single week so guys please once again oh, also share the video don't forget to share it please feel free as always guys please remember be good be blessed wear your mask black lives matter and i will definitely see you next time